Um, supposedly, we had talked about uh, trying to get some things in the area that were uh, restaurants, nice little places. So from what was presented at me to me at first, that looked like this might be somewhat of that. So I will let you all take a look at it. Um, remember, this is not final. Those of you that haven't been on maybe one of these before, please, please, um, at the end, uh, there's always time for input and questions and those type of things. Please, please ask your questions. If you put something in the chat that wasn't looked at, Roy, I don't know, do you, are you the only one on here or you have somebody else on here with you? It's just me. Okay. So when there's only one person, uh, sometimes they don't see everything in the chat. So if you put something in the chat that doesn't get um, answered, please speak up, speak up and ask it. Or if somebody else sees it, they may want to speak up and put your question in the space. Um, but this isn't just a presentation to be told what's happening. This is also something for you to um, be able to add your input and questions and things. John, you have a question already? Yes, ma'am. I was wondering who is the principal, Roy, that you're representing? Uh, he hadn't uh, gotten uh, on there to start talking about his stuff yet. I was just kind of giving a, a no, briefing no. for it. So he's going to, I usually uh, then let them do the presentation and introduce whoever and then answer those type of questions for you. So is there anybody else that just on the pre-type type thing? <laughs> and I am going to turn mine off and I'm going to turn it over to you, Roy. And um, you heard all the different questions. Please give all the information about this, who owns, what's happening and all of that for people who have questions. Okay. And I don't know if John to. still has one. Go ahead, Roy. All right, I'm going to try to share this. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Everybody see that? Can you see that? Okay, good deal. Yes. So, um, so this property is it's it's outlined in green. It's about five and a half acres. It's on Old Hickory Boulevard, fairly close to the interchange and directly across from October Woods. And um, I'm just going to go through the process that I go through when any client contacts me or any prospective person contacts me about a piece of property, uh, one of the first things I will do is I'll look at the sub area policy. Generally, you know, that's the sub area policy was put in place by the community and it's a guideline for anybody that's going to develop a piece of property to uh, maybe have a general feeling about what might be supported by planning and hopefully by the community. So, and, and Roy, because it was asked of John before, and I thought you were going to go over that, you know, we have not had one of these on this specific one before. So the question always comes up about the owners, um, where they are, if they've got some more land like that. So um, please make sure to say who they are for. Um, the okay. So, so this property property is under option for purchase um, by uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of Jay Patel. Uh, he's done other developments in this area. I don't know exactly which, but at this point, you know, this is just uh, an opportunity to meet with the community to see what the community might support or not support. Um, I have met with the council member. I've exp you know I've expressed it to her, shown it to her, which I would always do. I try to go through the right process. So I've talked to planning just to see what they think. I've talked to the council member. And so now my next step is to go to talk to the community. This individual has not purchased the property. He will not purchase the property if he cannot develop it in a manner which, you know, he would like to develop it and also in a manner which pleases the community. So can you speak so on just a bit, Roy? Mm -hmm. Who's asking? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Can you zoom it in just a little bit, please? Uh, this is a word document. I don't think I can zoom it in, but uh, the, on the bottom, right? Oh, yeah, okay. lower right, right. All right. I see it. All right. Thank okay. you. You make it out. Of focus. Yeah, it's not bad. So I've got other images that I'll show you, but so I, know, I don't know if you see my cursor moving around. Can you see that? 
Probably not. So yes, so the I see it. Okay, so there's the entrance to October Woods. And uh, here's the interchange. This is, uh, I guess it used to be Watson's. I'm not sure what it is right now. Uh, there's a car wash. Is it a truck car wash up on the corner? And so uh, the street that actually accesses the what used to be Watson's enters in this property. But as you'll see on a, a, a next image, there's a stream buffer there. And I'll just move to that right now. So this is sort of, this is still zoomed in. So the property is outlined in green. The this is listed as Transect Three CC, which is Suburban Community Center. Uh, suburban Community Center allows a lot of different things, and I'll show that to you in just a second. But you can see where the stream runs through the property. So access from I think this is Musi Drive is probably problematic crossing this. I think you, you could cross it. I'm not sure that you would want to. So this property's access points will be off of Oreca Boulevard, unless the community, you know, wants an access off of Musi Drive. Uh, this is uh, under T3. I'm going to zoom it back in just a little bit, out just a little bit. Under under the Transect 3 Community Center, uh, these are base zonings that um, would be supported, mixed-use zonings, uh, residential and office zonings up to 20 units per acre, commercial limited, commercial neighborhood, shopping center, and of course, a design-based zoning. Most zoning that we see is a design-based zoning because generally with base zonings, you cannot put architectural standards or particular uh, standards or restrictions or requirements within a base zoning. So if we proceed with this project, it will be a design-based zoning. I had, uh, I had actually sent this to the planning commission in a pre-application conference, Let's see if it's down here, and uh, this is back in November. And so I sent this to the planning commission. I basically sent them a plan saying that we're gonna go through a specific plan process. Planning commission said it's really not necessary. They would support a commercial limited district dash A. But again, you can't add a lot of restrictions or requirements in a base zoning, although it's nice that they would support it, I would never present it that way. It would always be a specific plan. Um, so what I have looked at, and I've been looking for quite a while for something for this district, uh, as your council member probably knows. And I uh, there's a piece of property that's over, actually this is in Brentwood. Um, it's fairly unique. It's, um, it has uh, on, the, on the exterior corners or uh, places to eat and then they have uh, shops in the center and they have parking. So it creates a really cool site, it's like a town center. And then at the end of that, you'll see that's a four story like hotel building right there. And so I basically took this, this exact plan and I overlaid it onto this property and that's more or less what it would look like. Um, it's a little bit different. I'm showing these at 90 degree parking. That's parallel parking. You could do these parallel as well. Just need to make sure that you have enough parking to serve the entire property. I stayed off of this drain that we talked to that came off of Moosey Drive and provided some fairly large stormwater areas that you can collect runoff and treat water and you know create very really high levels of water quality. So um, so again, this is this property is it's just under option. It's for sale. I have no clue how much it's for sale for but it's for sale and I, I found an individual that's, that would like to develop something along this line right here. And so this is still high level. There's not been anything formally submitted for, for approval or review other than just a pre-application conference. I've met with your council member and I've shown this to her as well. And then the next step obviously is to talk to all you guys as a whole. So that's where I am. So I'm here to field any questions or if you have any general comments about the use, that's probably more appropriate uh, to give me some direction so that I can guide my client and uh, go to the next step, hopefully. Hey Roy, my first question is, is this the same Mr. Patel that owns the property across the street and is gonna develop it? You know, uh, Juan, there are so many Patels. <laughs> I will find out for us exactly what he's developed. 
Um, I, I don't know that he's done anything across the street. We could pull up parcel viewer. We could probably look at the property owner's name to see what it says. Um, did you say there's something under design or development right now? It's part of the I-24 limited PUD across the street. Uh, Nishath Patel from Franklin that owns a hotel. Okay. I'm not sure, Tawana. Have y'all had any problems with it? He's not been at any meetings. They always say that he's out of the country. So I just want to know if it's the sure. same person. Well, you know, obviously I know, you know, how y'all would like to meet the face of a project. And so if we move forward on this, then I will make him available. Um, but I always want to say this. You know, zoning is not really based upon an individual. Once the zoning is, is placed on a piece of property, the zoning is only as good as the document that's put together because uh, Mr. Patel or Mr. Dale or Ms. Twanachik or John Stern, you know, we could all have options on properties to take things through and rezone them, but then we could also convey them or sell them to someone else. So, so the, this plan or this SP is only as good as the plan itself. It's not a plan driven by an individual. Can you um, say a little more about access and the desire to come sure. out on the old hickory and whether you know about the recent uh, changes that NDOT um, applied for that whole area and the improvements off of I-24 that are connected to the uh, Century South PUD and just how that's all going to work together. Okay, so um, so this is um, this is the layout as I had put it together. Um, since this has not been a formal submittal, there's not been a traffic study yet, which would have to be done, and then there would have to be coordination with the various departments. So we haven't even gotten to that point. So this is just my thought. You know, after I've looked at this more and more, to me, it may make sense to, although it's a stream crossing, it is a crossing at 90 degrees, which is allowed, doesn't even require a variance, probably to provide an access off the back of this property makes sense to me and might be the result of whatever traffic and parking might come back with. I see, I keep saying traffic and parking, but NDOT. So, you know, NDOT will look at this and they'll look at it based upon the traffic study and based upon whether whatever else they're doing that I'm simply not aware of, Tona. Yeah, Roy. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, now, with recent other meeting that uh, Tawana mentioned, there's been a traffic study over the other plan. They're widening mm -hmm. that whole Hickory Boulevard. Uh, I think it's like four or five lanes, which would push some things back. Um, and then it would make more sense. I'm sure they're going to have a stoplight at that Musi Drive to have one access point. Uh, your your idea is stay away from the stream bus buffer. Sounds logical to me. Um, I may agree with Juan in some cases on some of these things that we I don't like when they impact these these streams. I think we're just we're ruining our streams. But um, it does make more sense to have that access point at Musi. Just because if you have more stuff off Old Hickory, it's, it's there's already congestion and it's really hard for people to get coming in and out of there on a daily basis. Yeah, so just, I think that just by looking at you know this map, this drainage way probably does not have a very large drainage area, probably, and so crossing it is probably not a major ordeal. And I agree, I'm agreeing with you. If there's a traffic light there, that may make a, a great level of sense. And if they're widening Old Hickory all the way down, like closer to October Woods, then you don't want to have conflicting movements. Uh, and so, you know, that's that's something that would be the result of a traffic study. But I simply haven't gotten that far yet because I'm not sure what the general sentiment is. You know, that, that decision will be made after tonight's meeting, you know, whether to move to the next step or not. So, um, so this is high level. Uh, this is something that I've heard maybe would be something that community might like, but you don't have. Uh, I know a lot of people in this area, especially Long Burkett, they probably go all the way to 
Nolensville or, um, you know, to the little shops and restaurants that they have out there, you simply don't have much of that. And I think that this could provide that for you if it's done the right way. Hey, Roy. Yeah. Uh, if somebody will let me share, I've got the uh, traffic uh, figures from the uh, Century South, uh, you know, the 400 acre Century South proposal. Well, it's not a proposal, it's a PUD mm -hmm. uh, that we have. So, will somebody mind sharing? Who would it be? Uh, Rosie? Okay, Roy, well, the Century South's a pretty good distance. Roy can hand side. it over to you since he's sharing now. Well, she's got to let me share. <laughs> can, you, can you stop and share for a second, uh, Roy? I sure can. I'm going to try my best. I know. It's technology its finest, buddy. I, I, I'll tell you, because it says I'm sharing. Now i got to figure out how to stop sharing. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> share until you, you stop and start. I can turn it over to John, or you can share it with John. Well, maybe I don't want John. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rosie knows that's a wise decision. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to stop sharing. Um, Go to the share button on the bottom. Well, it's, button. Uh, it's on the top. That's why I can't find it. Okay, oh. there you go. Okay. You were on top. There you go, John. All right, Rosie. Okay, give me a I'll second. Really you got it. Roy, um, while he's getting that up on the screen, the next question that I would have is whether y'all look really. at acquiring the property uh, between this one and the interstate so that you would have more options for access. You know, I agree, Tawana. I actually mentioned that to Jay. Uh, I don't know uh, what the status of that property is, but to me, it does make a lot of sense. And I don't know if you reach out to that property owner and include them in a plan, you know, so it's more a holistic plan. Maybe you include them in it and they they get it for free, you know. But uh, I, I I tend to agree that uh, even providing some kind of parallel access to that parcel, especially since that parcel is closer to the interchange and closer to the improvements that uh, that you have here that I'm looking at right now. Um, it, it may need a shared access point. It 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 looks like that's what's going to make sense. It, it, yeah. This is going to be a real messed up intersection. This is going to be a real messed up uh, piece of old Hickory Boulevard. Uh, and unfortunately, we couldn't keep the you know the the truck wash from happening. So we've got to so so we're going to have eighteen wheelers in the mix of this these traffic movements, which is going to mess up access to your uh, proposed development. But right now, um, this is the entrance into, well, let's make sure we know, this is I-24. Yep. This is the old Hickory Boulevard exit. Uh, <clears throat> there's another example of uh, where it shows some new improvements to create a right turn lane here. Uh, and we turn into a two lane, um, Supposedly uh, buffered by, uh, gosh, what do you call them? The, the the islands in the middle of the road, Roy. You're better than I am on that. The uh, islands in the middle of the road. You Are know the. Circles? Huh? Not the traffic circles. No, there's not going to be a traffic circle here. So, so uh, I don't. I'm a little confused. So the property that is on that left hand side, that's that's property that's been zoned forever, but never developed. Yeah, it's four, four, yep, 400 acres. It's got about uh, about a million square feet of maybe 500,000 square feet of commercial, uh, which is going to come on. And, and that P Patel has got a Patel has got a chunk of that uh, right there at the entrance way. And uh, the work that Tuana has been leading the charge on. Thank you, Tuana has been uh, on the apartments, the multifamily stuff that was going in uh, on, I don't know, 50 well, acres. Franklin, Franklin Road or whatever. Uh, well, it, this this connects to Old Franklin Road with a two-lane roadway now, or will connect up to uh, 
you know, past the Carroll Properties thing and on to Old Franklin Road. But for your I project, think, I just didn't think that that was actually going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, they're the parties. We've been meeting with them, or Quan has been meeting with them for six months, a year. Um, so it's going to happen. Uh, okay. They got through planning, didn't they, Twana? Yes, and it was only a plan amendment, so that's all they have to do. Well, is it, it wasn't even an amendment. It was a revision. So they didn't have to go through uh, Council Lady Lee to get it. Okay. Well, so this is that you're talking about. So <clears throat> I'm guessing that this may be the access point for your development in and out. Um, it might not be the best, but it may beat putting another one in. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, that's uh, <clears throat> the, 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 there's the uh, church. Um, was it Gilroy? Yes. And I guess this is the property you're talking about, huh? Yeah, zoom in, zoom in on that, John, if you don't mind. I don't mind a bit. You know, down towards the southern, you know, push it up the page a little bit so I can see a little bit further down the page. So yeah, uh, here, here's the apartments, I guess. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> I mean, doing another, I mean, Gilroy is going to have a problem getting in and out. Um, I know Twana tried to fix it, but again, Mr. To give them a, they, they agreed at the planning commission to give them an easement to utilize the future roadway. Um, so oh, Roy, it's, it's, um, it's the fact that Musi drive will have a traffic light. Yeah. Uh, and also you mentioned that waterway and that waterway carries more water than you might expect. Uh, you can look on some aerial views right now and see where it has washed out pretty badly on the PUD side. It carries a pretty significant volume of water. So uh, well, if you look at the top of your page there, you'll see where it looks like that truck wash crossed that stream. Right. Yeah, and how they that happened. It. So they crossed it 90, you know, I mean, it's not quite 90 degrees, but so, you know, we can always look at the size of that crossing just to see, but it has been crossed in, you know, nearby. So right up I think here. we can cross it without much trouble. But I agree, it looks like the axis would probably should needs to be off Moosey. Because if you're coming down south uh, to get to the site, then you would have to cross over a turn lane, and you wouldn't want to do that. And it would be much better for everybody to have that one nice entrance, and sure. it would just give you all more leeway to look at some opportunities if you had that other little piece. I don't know anything about that other property owner. Well, I mean, I'll check into it, but again, at this point, I haven't even started a process yet. Sure. I, mean, I want to do that. If everybody's generally, you know, generally okay with something occurring here, doesn't mean it's going to happen. It just allows me to right. tell my client, look, let's let's move on and, and see what the results of further, you know, investigation will be. Well, and have we, as we, go ahead. Go ahead, John. Well, as, as we've discussed, Roy, uh, this, you know, the, this parcel is within, um, you know, within a commercial area. That's, that's just going to be a huge commercial retail, uh, apartment, uh, community. Uh, I mean, we're talking about 400 acres here and then the 300 acres to the north in century farms. Um, there's going to be a lot of restaurants and a lot of the things coming, uh, and there's going to be a lot of space for sale or rent, uh, but it would be nice to have more of a neighborly feel, something, something like what you were showing from Brightwood. I've, something I've that creates a, a town center type effect, I think would be yeah. a positive yeah. thing. And yeah. I think if you could include that adjacent property that we're talking about now, because access into that parcel is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, so, this one. Uh, the, yeah, the, you know, the one that looks like a little rectangle there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that little rectangle, because 
there would be no way to turn left into that without stopping traffic if you're going south because there's no turn lane there. You could have a right in and a right out, I guess, but mm, that's not going to be helpful. So oh, I you think mean right in and right out here? Yeah, on that, on that, you can see yes. where there's a square there where it's been, where the vegetation has been sort of cut. That's probably yeah. represents that parcel. And so if you were going to come south on Old Hickory and turn into that property, you're stopping traffic. There's no way to do that. So using Moosey is probably a good idea if, it, if something can be incorporated as, as a good access point. So I'm agreeing still, with what you're saying. But still doing a right in, right out. Yeah, maybe a right in, right out would be good. But if you're, again, if you're coming south on Old yeah, Hickory, you're trying to turn into that property, you're turning no. across a dedicated turning lane. That's yeah. not generally what you're going to want to do. But traffic well, the NDOT will look at this, and our traffic engineers will look at this, and and we'll figure it all out, I'm sure. So what about mobility? What do they have planned there? Because I don't see anything. Was there any traffic lanes or, I mean, uh, bicycles or anything like that incorporated in this plan? No. Uh, you'll go back and look at the thing that was submitted. I think it was two meetings back at planning. It's got the, the traffic study and all that stuff. Is in that packet, so a lot of that's already done was, for you. So if was you, it the was it the uh, the, uh, the HUD revision submittal that they did? Yes, because I'm I'm looking for the files. Can I just ask a question? Up, whoever that is under you, John, has a hand up. So go ahead, please, because I can't see a name or anything with that. <clears throat> well, the yeah. hand has disappeared. Yeah, it was me. Um, oh. I will say that it just in Roy back in general, I know a few people within October Woods do well. What they want is a this little town center, better restaurants. That stuff in front of the October Woods right now, um, I don't think people are very satisfied with that. Sure. But the if we can get in a, a nice looking like that Brentwood establishment where there's yeah. nicer restaurants and we don't have to worry about a lot about traffic, if we extend the sidewalk, there's a crosswalk, we can get across the street. And extend that sidewalk to that development, and that could cut down a lot of possible traffic, and people could walk there. I mean, I've that walked. That's the next thing I was going to add is that there needs to be some safe passage from October Woods where you can walk across to this. And so we're going to have to look at that too. And I know that NDOT will be looking at all forms of mobility. And so well, there's, uh, there's a crosswalk from October Woods to the Burkett Place, and that. Is. Yes, and then there's a sidewalk that goes up to that property, but it stops there. And so if that is extended, that helps a lot of things and people don't have to um, drive. And that whole apartment complex could use a sidewalk as well. So yes, sure. if there's a sidewalk included um, and part of Metro codes would require, I'm sure, a sidewalk to be placed there as well. Absolutely. But in general, I'd say I know if a few people might be in favor of something like that, if it looks nice, I think a few people were disappointed when the the apartments didn't put in like they I guess they talked about were supposed to have some sort of um, stuff up front and they didn't build that with those apartments. So I think some people would like to see something like that. So whoever's showing that image, how about enlarging that? Uh, I am going to give it a big. Uh, let me see if I can't. And I, I want to piggyback off what Andrew said, the crosswalk that is there um, would be the right place, it feels like, but it could be improved to be one of the better, uh, higher visibility crosswalks, because as you know, Roy, people absolutely fly down Burkett Road, and right. everyone in this area would love to not have to go across I-24 to go eat at some better places so uh nice little restaurants would be fantastic i would love to see included in the sp the things that will be prohibited like we don't want any more sn smoke shops and uh discount beer and that kind of thing um we keep asking for certain things and not getting those and instead getting those kind of things that we don't want more of I've actually had a very, very good talk with Roy, and I think he's very familiar about the things that we want in there. 
those other places that we got over there, uh, they were already in there. They were not a piece of what our community talked about and wanted. That's why we've done the, um, <clears throat> the SP on them too, to make sure, because um, I am very deliberate about what we don't want. Um, and so since I kind of uh, interrupted into this a little bit, let me share this with you, because I was not aware of this. I just got a call um, for many of you that may not know, I work with the schools in Williamson County as well. And I just got a call that said Williamson County schools were closed because of the weather that's supposed to be coming. I guess I had been doing so much, I hadn't been paying close attention to that. So I just wanted to tell you all to be uh, very careful. We're supposed to get some very, very bad weather wind. So if you've got stuff, chairs that blow around and stuff, make sure that you hanker those down. I just wanted to add that into it while I got the information. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, I apologize for this uh, PDF file. Uh, Gresham Smith gave us a uh, uh, a peculiar file because it keeps <laughs> it's not all that big, but it continues to uh, do what it's doing. Yeah, so, well, that's so okay. next... I, I just wanted to point out that you know, since this was zoned some time ago and it's probably not as restricted as it should be, those that property is the one that could wind up with a lot of uses that you don't like. Absolutely. So, so, so whatever is if something happens on the property we're looking at today then we could do something within this plan that restricts all the uses that you just don't want. Roy, um, my perception is that because this property you're looking at would have fewer challenges, it could be developed quicker than the I-24 PUD limited property. And so that could help set a standard or what they would then put over there. Um, just a theory that I have. I don't know. It's possible. I mean, yeah. It just looks like that plan is mostly multifamily. It's got some office on it and it's got some big box. So maybe you'll get a Publix or something someday. You know, it's possible. That wouldn't be a terrible thing. Yeah, this is all commercial on, you know, here's, here's where your property is. Yeah, well, south of that, right? South of that, and then this is all commercial CS kind of stuff. That's where they were going to put the uh, car uh, car dealership. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I remember one of the at large members. I think he served with you. I can't remember his name. The jovial guy that yes. hangs out in Nantucket. George Armistead, probably. Ah, uh, yes, George. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Adam Dredd, that's who it was. Oh, yes. Adam, oh my gosh. Adam and yeah. Adam uh, signed on to the bill with Don Knox because yeah. Don Knox was being uh, recalled at the time. Uh, and they re redid this to CS and nobody was nobody was watching really. So Well, that's... Adam was not was not a fan of Adam Dredd, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, he was a character, still is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we can go back to your thing if you let no, me unshare. I just, you know, I just want to proceed to the next step. I mean, it sounds like, I mean, I've heard what everybody says and, and, and I pretty well. Let's get some, <clears throat> Roy, let's get some conversation then from some of those that haven't said anything, kind okay. of give their two cents. Cause I don't know how this happened since we were talking about it before. I cannot stand that truck, truck wash. And I'm so afraid because I have been there when those trucks are going across. And also we need to clear up. We mentioned it to um, our officers once. At night, those trucks just park on the lanes. And so that is troublesome as well. So as we're looking at what you're doing, and, and you all are most certainly right about the exit, uh, not on um, Old Hickory, but Musi. Um, we, I, I want to be very careful about how we do that traffic because I think that is already trying to cross that that road already dangerous in there. Do I have some two cents from somebody else maybe that's listening and hasn't hasn't spoken yet?
I've got some more to add if no one else has anything. Go ahead, Tawana. I would uh, I would love Roy to see it be if possible um, have parking under the building do a two story with some parking under so that there is more uh, absorbent green space left in place because of the creek right behind it that dumps uh, straight into Hurricane Creek and into the Stone River watershed um, and I wonder if you have any idea about how much square footage you would need for it to to work and stuff? At this point, I really don't. I mean, I think that as I continue and go to the next step, I'll be able to answer that. Um, but no, I don't, Tawana. Hey, Roy, let's, let's go down and I've been starting to experiment with uh, drone aviation. Uh, it's something that I find to be quite fun. Uh, let's see about, uh, Look, look, creating some aerial reviews of that area uh, with uh, with a drone uh, when when you and I get chance. I, I think we have a drone here. I just don't know if we ever use it anymore. Hmm. I've never. We yeah, started trying much. to do li lidar surveys. Yeah. And, uh, and it's okay, but I think we have a drone. Well, bring it out. I'll hmm. show you yours. I mine. All right. So we kind of have a sense of what you're looking at and what you're thinking about. Um, and I know you just brought this to kind of uh, do the concept to see what people felt about the concept. Um, and if it looks like it does in those pictures, I really like it. I really like it and think it could be a, a good piece here. Um, do you need to talk about, because you know, my concern was that motel that hotel and mm -hmm. the type of hotel it would be uh and the quality of the hotel because that could really um bring down or boost up the area and then we haven't talked about the townhouses or apartments any and i know you haven't gotten real specifics because you just want to see if the concept works but maybe share a little bit about that as well i'm not i'm you lost a year Townhouses and apartments. Okay, so we're only going to have the stores in that motel, a hotel. Correct. That's it. Okay, have you all have you talked any about the hotel or what kind it might be or, you know, we talked about I don't want a day's in yeah. or something like that. Right. So you know, I have just generally talked to him that this is going to have to be of quality. So I mean, he knows that. Um, as I put a plan together, we'll set architectural standards and I'll be able to calculate the number of rooms and, but I don't know how you control the branding of something like that. Uh, like, I don't, we, I don't think we could set, I know there's not going to be a hotel six, but I don't think we could put in an ordinance. It can't be a hotel six. So what we have to do is establish the quality of it and the materials of it so that it drives the value of it and maybe we could look at even minimum room size maybe to not uh, to have maybe have a specific size so most rooms are suites maybe you know uh, so I, I think there's a way to answer that uh legally uh i just need to get into it okay i, I think Sounds it's good. troubles i think it's troublesome roy uh when you look out at uh old hickory boulevard i-40 in hermitage they're mm -hmm. having a ton of problems with the hotels that have popped up in well hadn't popped up they've been there for years and as they age the quality degrades and they have they, they have transient populations and it's a problem uh there's plenty of hotel space there's i think somewhere in the neighborhood of uh what 15 story uh 1.5 million square feet of hotels uh designated for century uh farms so there's not a lack of locations for them and that, that would be the that would be the place where i think we would want to see hotels placed this that's just my opinion but uh they just bring a lot of problems that could be hard for us to address 
But what was Mr. Patel's first name, Roy? J. J A Y. Oh, I know. <laughs> J A Y. Yes. J. I looked at that across the street. It's names I can't even pronounce. So, but I mean, I'll find out about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to uh, to share. I'm gonna talk. To, I'm gonna go back to sharing again because. You know, maybe Jay is not the one that winds up using this. I don't know. But but if we do something like this, yeah. It needs to have some kind of an anchor on the end. It doesn't necessarily have to be a hotel. It could be a manor house. It could be some form of residential. But to me it needs an it needs some anchor. Anchor, you know, to make it look and feel right. So uh, I can explore all of that. Um, I mean, you could theoretically just stacked flat building in there with individual stacked flat units for sale. Um, in a town center would might maybe not be a bad thing. Might not provide some indigenous uh, consumers. Just, I mean, I'll look at that. But see, the That's design absolutely. of this building did look sort of manner-ish. It doesn't look like a hotel. No, so, it doesn't. Uh, but, it, but it is a hotel. I don't it's know. Like a days in or something. I don't know. Because I used to get my hair cut uh, on the left side of the... Okay. <laughs> the, I think the black awning, I'm pretty sure. But um, council lady, could we like... Could you like put together a few folks out of... Uh, uh, out of the neighborhood there and a couple of us and, you know, Roy to sit down and talk through some of these things. Would that be a reasonable way to move forward? Sounds good to me. Roy, is that something that's reasonable for you? I, I think it's fine with, for me. I don't know how long he has an option on this. I don't know. And, you know, it, it doesn't make any difference. Right. So, well, so I, I'm looking, I pulled this up on a map, John. And so that at the end of that uh, town center is the Hilton Garden Inn. Ah. And after it, yeah, well, this is Brentwood. So I got to let it get run down. That, that just, uh, that just sort of answers your question. So, yes, sir. so at the, at the entrance to that, actually it, it was an office building. And then this Hilton Garden Inn, Garden Inn was sort of built around that. So whatever we're seeing with the plantation looking front is probably an office building. And, well, uh, off, to and the, then, off to the sides there, on either side of them, I think there's office buildings. Yeah, and then, then around it. that is a hotel that sort of matches the architecture yeah. of this little office space. I think that yeah. used to be a historic actually building they turned into a hotel and that was wow. the, why they made it a sin. Uh, it's been there forever. I can't mm -hmm. remember the history of it, but I'm pretty sure it's a historic like building. They turned it into something more. Very it's cool. been there for a very long time. Maybe that center little building, maybe possibly it was. I don't know. Andrew, do you think that you or you and a couple of people in October Woods um, since you're like right across from there, uh, would be some of the ones as well to to meet with Roy if he's going to talk to some community um, leaders. If you could possibly get two or three, I know I can get a I, I can probably get a couple of people. Yes, and I'm definitely Great. willing to meet with him. Great, and I'll try to find somebody in um, one or two people oh, wow. from October Woods as well. I mean, from um, Apple Valley as well. So I found a, an image from 2014. So wow. that looks like it was an old building that was there. That's very cool. Let me see if it's. If you'll do a Google search for City Park Brentwood, it, there, there's a lot of Google photos on there that, you know, it, it looks pretty nice. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the, 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 the offices on either side of it aren't that hot, and it's a really weird traffic thing getting in and out of there, but uh, that piece that uh, Roy is show, was showing is is a very, is a desirable design that I think 
we would like to begin to see out here. Okay, guys. Well, man, just I'll be more than happy to meet whenever y'all want to meet. Just let me know. <clears throat> well, yeah, you need to check with Mr. Patel about uh, his option length so we know what the timeline is. Sure. And uh, who's who's representing that property? Is it the Avondale guys or? Um, I have no clue who the, if there's an Allison. agent involved. I don't know. Okay. See if the uh, adjacent one would be part of it too. It, it would sure be desirable to have both of them planned together and both of them would be better because of that. And shoot, while you're at it, find out why they're not doing something on the front of the apartments. I mean, <laughs> it really needs to be one cohesive, nice little strip there. Yeah, it'd be kind of nice to be able to link into. Uh, I mean, that could that could be a natural ingress egress right across from October Woods. Yeah, two uh, you know, those two parcels. In. Yep, those two parcels could lead right into uh, Patel's, and then if we connect the other parcel, uh, that's <clears throat> yes, looks like it's a. Either a PUD or a SP. It says it's an SP. Which, so, which one? Uh, the one across the street from the car wash and uh, the spa center. Yeah. Um, Andrew, can you uh, pull pull some names and uh, email addresses and send it to Twana or I and Roy? Uh, You'll send a couple copy of me, copy me on that too, please, Andrew, because I'm going to try to get some people from Apple Valley so that we can have uh, some people here in the area as well. What Absolutely. I'll do is I'll put a post on this about the meeting I had or attended oh, this and I'm going to try to recruit a few people and then I can send you guys information. And I think I have John's information. If I don't, John, can you put it in the chat? Well, sure. I'm contact info in the chat too, please. And so, um, so everybody needs to be also aware that um, in May, well, actually in January of last year, the Metro Council uh, uh, passed either a resolution or a bill, I forget which it was, uh, <clears throat> that was to force the Metro Planning Commission to re-evaluate all of the community plans throughout Davidson County. And <clears throat> that really was too big of a scope for them at that time and still is. So we included, uh, Twana and I, uh, we got included uh, with the help of Councilman Rutherford, uh, Cane Ridge as a uh, one of the 10 areas that the planning commission would come out and review for the sub area plan, uh, community plan. And that is going to come out um, and we're gonna start, probably start having community meetings uh, you know, as, soon as, as soon as we can get Council Aid Lee briefed on it and Councilman Rutherford and Council Member Stiles, uh, but we have four uh, independent areas that we're hoping to see detailed community plans, uh, much of which we're hoping to see remain as rural character uh, property. Um, but <clears throat> that's coming, guys, and we'll look forward to, uh, I'm sure Council Lady Lee will let us know more about that as we move forward and we'll stay connected as well, but that's coming and it's going to be a great, hopefully be a great thing. Uh, so that we don't have to chase all these weird development proposals as they come in. Uh, we'll just, <laughs> but <clears throat> Roy, okay. I got to tell you, this is a good, this is a reasonable plan for in a reasonable location. 
anything further south on Burkett, it, I mean, Old Hickory Boulevard, is not once you get past uh, once you get past the apartments there. We're looking, and as you know, many of the residents there want to remain in a rural character. So, you know, I talked to those um, clients that wanted to develop that area. Yeah, and I told them that they just need to wait to see. I know y'all are going to be looking at redoing the whole policy, maybe for this area, and yep. just see how that falls out. I'm glad Thank you me. didn't tell them to wait till we die. <laughs> <laughs> I did tell them that also. <laughs> Hey Roy, <laughs> are, were you the developer on the uh, other side of October Woods there at the? You know, I'm not a developer. No, well, I mean, what you were just speeding through though, you had the plans. Was that what I was looking at? Uh, uh, well, what we're talking about, I pulled up that uh, specific plan uh, because I just wanted to see if they had added any cross access into that plan. That's what I was looking for. And it, was it only a sidewalk? Did I see that it, right? It, I didn't see it. I didn't see any cross access, unfortunately. So yeah, that's it's terrible that, for them to have to try the, to. Can you see the plan? Yeah, and it looks mm -hmm. like they could only come right out onto Old Hickory Boulevard, which it would does. be really bad at that intersection. It's unfortunate they didn't provide like a, you know, cross access. You know. Right. Or and, and it's it's possible that. Whenever someone comes in with that, since it is in a specific plan, there's no reason why planning can't work with that applicant to provide some kind of a cross access, even if it's That's just a pedestrian true. cross. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You could. You could come into a, a whole slew of commercial stuff there by simply going from October woods through 1 traffic light. And then you'd also have access back out in Musi Drive with another traffic light. That would be smart. That would make so much sense. Well, who said we're smart? <laughs> <laughs> that would make too much sense, Tawana. Let's do that, Roy. I'm just telling you. Okay. <clears throat> We've got about five minutes left. So I did want to, because I always try to open it up anybody. Um, uh, this is this is wonderful because it's at the beginning, so we're getting you know what we want that type of thing. Does anybody else who has not spoken want to like just put anything in the room? Okay, um, John, is your hand up for a question again, or is that from before? No, I've got I've got additional questions. Uh, uh, Councilor Lee, you remember that you were going to co-host a meeting on a proposed new fire station with uh, the neighbors of Carruthers Crossing last month. And even though I spoke with both the chief and the assistant chief, uh, they ended up sending back a very negative uh, letter saying that they uh, weren't willing to talk, that they were going to decide where to put a fire hall and then let you know and let you, and then you could let us know what they decided, which was like, yeah, it, it's very distressing. Um, so what I would ask is, can you reach out to uh, Chief Swain, Swan, uh, and get him to join us in a larger community meeting uh, for? all of the area down here uh, to discuss what they're wanting to do with the public funds that we create um, and we would like them to invest them well in a new fire hall down here but we have a lot of local knowledge on where that should be or issues related to sites that they're looking at so it'd be very helpful we try doing that I will reach out to him. I didn't, in what I read from them, I thought they did not have enough information yet and thought they wouldn't be able to intelligently talk about it. And that's why they uh, didn't want to do the meeting at that time. But I'll reach out to them to see if um, <clears throat> if anything has changed and they can give us any more information. I will do that. Um, it is about, ooh, we don't have but three minutes, but I did want to share this with you. 
Um, so I guess everybody who is on here is on my database or since you got the information about that. If you have anybody that says they can't get in contact or they don't get the information, please give them uh, Ms. Roseanne's um, email so that they can uh, send that and get on the database and the emails that go out. And that's on my Facebook page as well. I want to let you all know that we are having a meeting on, uh, where is it? It's about the trucks on the 16th. Now, this is going to be about, there is a company that works on trucks. It is up on, um, what do you turn down? You turn down the road on the other side of the TA. You go down that road. So that's already commercial and stuff. Um, and they already have a place there where they work on trucks. The land beside them was a type of car, a truck wash, and he is getting ready to sell his. And so what um, the, the truck, the, the ones that work on a truck, what they want to do is to buy that to see if they can just expand their area. So that's what this meeting is going to be on. Um, so that is the road that goes down beside, you know, on the other side of the TA going down to the right. Um, Firestone Parkway, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Um, so that's what that meeting is going to be on. Then on the 30th, we are having one, and those are the gentlemen that came. They did not present the whole thing. Um, I think they were looking at doing something for um, an aged uh, 55 and up, and they were trying to listen to see what you all wanted. So I think now they've got some more things in place. I know they said they had reached out to the community to try to meet with some community members, uh, but that had not uh, come through. So they're gonna have another meeting um, to present things to you to hear what the community wants uh, on, with them. And so that was the address of that is? Too. I'm sorry? Do you remember what the address of that is? I don't. Do you have that? Yeah. Wait a minute, I can probably pull it up. But um, I'll try to pull it up while I'm talking and then I'll give it to yeah, you. Sure. Um, and so those are the only ones I have in March. I am trying, since people were saying, why are we having so many community meetings? I am trying not to have, let's see where that is, more than two um, a month. But we have so many people and so much information that it may end up being more than that. Let's see, where did I put that information? Okay, let's see what I have. Let me see if I can make it big. It is on the site New Zero and 3654 Hamilton Church concept rider, mm. render, whatever. That's what that is. That's what that's what it is. And they had come to us once before, but they were more talking about what what did you all want to see? So they didn't have a specific uh, product that they went through everything. So those two um, are what we have left in March. Um, and uh, I guess that's just about it. I will try not to have so many meetings. I'm not having a meeting, a community meeting every week. I'm trying now to have it only twice a month. This one ended up because we had, uh, this, because today is the first week. So we will end up with three this month. Well, don't forget about Monday. We'll have a master gardener there to uh, share some expertise. It's just about spring planting time. That sounds wonderful. And that's on the 6th, correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the truck? Uh, what was the truck uh, meeting date? That is the 16th. 16th. Thank you. That's the 16th. All right. Well, if you all are near the area, you really should try to go to the meeting on Monday. Um, my I, my job schedule doesn't always let me do things, um, but I will try right now. I don't have any meetings. I don't think the, legis well, the legislature is meeting, but they shouldn't be long. Um, but if you haven't been to it, it's really nice. You get a lot of information. You meet a lot of people in the area. You find out things that's going on. Plus, they have pot potluck. But you're having spaghetti this time. 
Yeah, we're trying to just provide more stuff so people don't have to rush home and try to cook. They can just come join us. Cool. All right, then. Uh, guess okay. that's it. Just be careful. Remember, we're supposed to get bad weather. Thank you all for coming on and spending your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye.